Okay. Um, and I am going to record this session. Um, as always, we record the Purple WRT meeting, so people who aren't here can uh, can follow along. Um, we have an awesome turnout today, 16 people, so um, thank you everyone for joining. I'm always happy when we can get such a great turnout and people interested in all the stuff that's going around around uh, Purple and OpenWRT and LEAD. Um, introductions, we have too many people, I think, to do introductions, so we'll just go right into the... <clears throat> update on the ADB TR069 CM software integration within OpenWRT, which was suggested by Pasquale yesterday. Uh, do you want to give any um, like introduction to this, Pasquale, about you know what you're basically particularly were interested in? Or Yes, sure. First of all, thanks to have this topic to the agenda. So I would like to have you know, a, a, an update on where we stand concerning the ADB uh, TR069 and configuration management inter integration into WRT and especially related to the building of the abstraction layer that can host several different models and uh, uh, you know solution that can come from ADB and any other third party as a simple plugin so without any further you know change in API or in you know full store software customization or whatever because this was the original plan. And so since you know we delivered this code in during the middle of September and now we are almost after three months, I would like to get an update on where we stand. Um, having the possibility to see a, an updated plan on the timing that is still required for getting it done properly. And maybe also to get a snapshot on when we can get maybe a better delivery in order to double check the intermediate outcome for this project. All right, I think that's a that's a fair question. Um, in in regard to the ADB um, integration, uh, I ha uh, Art is I think just signing about ready to sign off on uh, Lucas. I, you know, he emailed me yesterday and said he was going to so. No, it's actually uh, yeah. already signed and it's already signed and back to you guys. Okay, I didn't get it yet. Then I must not have seen it. So, um, as soon as uh, so, Lucas should be able to get started on that part of it. Um, in regards to the to the actual framework, I think uh, I'll let um, Luca and uh, Felix take it from there. I can give a a, a short update on uh, state of my work. So I think uh, the, from from my perspective the abstraction layer is mostly done. It requires some more testing and maybe writing some more plugins. Uh, I, I think the basic API from, from what I can see should be suitable for uh, plugging into various different implementations. Uh, I took special care to ensure that the C API makes as few requirements as possible on any code that hooks into it so that different models, different ways of, of dealing with objects and all that uh, can be dealt with properly. And I got the, uh, the reference code that I originally wrote with a JSON-based abstraction layer. I put that in as an example, and it's actually working for some things already. So from my perspective, I, I guess most of it is done, and now it's time to collect as much feedback as possible from the people uh, that would be interested in using this API in connecting their own implementations and all that uh, to ensure that I got things right. So, um, yeah, I think from from a pure uh, API perspective, uh, there's not that much more that needs to be done from my side, except maybe some documentation, some testing. Um, Luca here. So, I'm just wondering if I sent to Davor and uh, Dennis from Sartura invitation in the last minute, so just to check if you guys are also on the call. Okay, anyway, um, so basically we started looking into um, the API that uh, Felix shared today, so, and uh, we followed the discussions that were on base camp between uh, Felix and uh, I think it was Mattel. And uh, yeah, so as far as the the integration is not going to be the same as it was for Soft at Home because Soft at Home didn't have 
open WRT packaging uh, done and with uh, ADV case this is all already delivered. So I'm just wondering what is now the best approach to start taking Felix's API and merging into ADB implementation and giving feedback or uh, I see that as only option at this point in time. So just double check with everybody that's the agenda or uh, Luca and Matteo speaking here. Uh -huh. uh, okay. We can we can probably discuss a part uh, on these specific technical details. My impression is that uh, since, as you as you stated, our uh, packages are already OpenWRT feed packages, so they are ready to be uh, built and run on a standard OpenWRT. The work that work that is worth to be done could be uh, following the discussion that we are that we have in progress with Felix on how to properly uh, make our spec um, talk with the SCAL implementation from Felix. Uh, your work could, could exactly follow these, these steps and um, provide some uh, input as well as a, a technical implementation for it once we decide on uh, one direction rather than the other because we have few uh, possibilities of the integration. What do you think? Uh, I agree with you for what you said. So it's if that's the case then it's uh, more or less just engineering effort to combine the project as it is now with a new uh, backend that uh, Felix put on uh, GitHub. Okay, okay for me, so for, from my point of view that's okay, we can move the discussion outside this, uh, this call uh, once everything is, 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 is done from a uh, from powerful point of view and then we can go into details uh, on, on the steps to be done. Pasquale okay. here, for me Pasquale here. For for me, that's fine. So to you know to to still continue this technical deep technical discussion, you know, in, in a different session. Anyway, I would like to get maybe by the next week call a possible plan in order to show the updated schedule for maybe having a sort of the first beta delivery that is of the first integration and so maybe not full functional or fully tested but at least that can show some you know preliminary functionality of our code into the OpenWRT and of course within the same schedule which is the target date for completing the, the, the exercise. Do you think that is feasible Luca and Felix? And also Matteo, of course. Yes, I, I think that's feasible. Uh, I'm not sure because uh, what I was going to ask you, can you get us access to some pre-setup so we don't lose much time to the ACS server because I am assuming you want to test it on a real like platform, not just like in a virtual machine, etc. So we like try to do something useful like set a few parameters, see how it's working on the device. So what I'm asking is, I think you mentioned before that you have some ACS. Uh, can can we get access to that? Okay, yes. I, I, originally I was in fact, you know, proposing if you were interested for me to take an action to double check internally if we can, you know, put this at your disposal. Uh, let me say that I will take the action and uh, in a few days I will let you know. A anyway, can we say that maybe for the beta delivery you don't need the, the full ACS and maybe for the beta delivery just maybe read and write and make some parameters, change, read and write, it it's good enough. And so at least this part of the schedule can be at our disposal because, you know, after more or less three months, we did not have yet any schedule for, for, but not for maybe ADV, but also in general for the 
third-party TRD of CC9 module integration, and I think that we should try to come to a conclusion. Uh, well, okay, so we just recently received a code job from Felix, and you have to understand that we also have some other projects, and we just are not waiting for something to happen, but are involved in other things as well. So it's uh, also requires some organizational thing from our side to dedicate resources and to start working. And uh, another topic is, so you, we can make it compile, but I haven't yet looked that deeply in your code, so how can we like, like send uh, messages or uh, things like that? So when you say uh, to have something POC, fine, we can like make it compile, and but I'm not sure how to test it. If not end-to-end, -end, then how to test it at all, you know? Luca, from my point of view, we can allow you uh, help from our engineers in order to understand how to work it out and how to, to test it and how to go on in the analysis so um, we are completely open to, to support you in the first phase of the analysis. Okay, okay. So my feedback based on our experience so far that by the end of, by, by next meeting, uh, we might not have concrete plan. And it's better that I communicate that to you now rather than to promise something. And so what we will definitely do, we will work with you and then we can provide update to next meeting and based on how far we get, we can make further plans and scheduling. I think that's fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. Okay. So, so, sounds good. Uh, is there anything else we want to discuss on this topic? Hey, Eric. Uh, it's, it's just a minor thing, but looks like in the past some people had uh, problems accessing uh, some some parts of the code that has been shared, and there's been a bit of misunderstanding whether this yeah. is on GitHub, which is accessible to everyone, rather than GitLab, which obviously is a different thing. Okay, it's it's only by invite. Okay? So, uh, would be probably useful just to make sure that everyone now knows where the relevant code is and how to access it, which is GitLab, not GitHub. Cesare, we, sh we should clarify that the um, the work that Felix is doing, the framework, is on our GitHub. It's on the Purple Foundation GitHub. The TR069 code for AD ADB is on GitLab, and it's an instance that um, is under their control. So you can get access to it as long as you ask and they sign off on it, which they have you know graciously done every time that anyone's asked. So. Um, I think that's a fair clarification, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I tried to explain that I telephone and that I listen to you, that you don't with me talk anymore. No, no. I can't listen to you and you should not fumble there, because otherwise... Felix, you may want to put on your own. Nils. Nils, not Nils, you are actually, uh, your audio was on. Sorry. Um, I will unmute you now, just so you know. Okay. Did, okay, did, thank you, Eric, for the clarification. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't really for me. It was really for yep. all the people involved in the actual uh, development. So as, as long as now they are clear, uh, that's fine with me. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yes, and Pascual uh, sent email uh, yesterday regarding the status, and I said, okay, give access to these people, and yeah, they've received it today or yesterday, so that's fine. All right. Okay, thanks. All right, Pasquale, thank you. Um, I, uh, someone was saying I would something. like, yes, so, uh, first of all, sorry for uh, all the noise. I would had to dial in and I forgot to mute again, so sorry for that. Um, with all this configuration IP we were talking about, um, I was wondering, and I, I was hoping to get some information here, um, because my idea for the next funding would be something like a cent more centralized, um, let's call it GUI for for the com configuration, and of course I would like to leverage um, the work you guys um, are doing, especially what Felix is doing, um, 
but so far I'm I'm not so much into detail. So I was hoping that also in regards to what the work that Daniel is doing and 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 Sucru was also saying, okay, hey, look, we're doing something here. Um, maybe not now, but maybe in the end we could um, take up um, that topic and, and drill deeper there, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah, fine, fine with me. Um, I have some time. Okay. okay, brilliant. Thanks. Yeah, I think that's a good idea to do. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure if this is the call to do it. Wait, we got a ton to go through, but um, yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good, great idea. Definitely to talk into that more. Sound good, Nils? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. No, glad you're glad you're thinking of these connections. Um, then we'll move on to the board farm status. Um, uh, I don't really have much update. I, I had sent um, uh, the you know the bug report I had to Hauke. I, I Hauke, do you have an update on that? Um, that that router that wasn't working for me. Uh, no, not really. I haven't looked into it. Okay. Uh, so the problem is that this is not supported by mainline OpenWRT or lead. Okay. So yeah. I don't know if we, if I fix it or we send you a new one or something like this. I will work on it. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I, that's that. That's fine. Also, I um got a uh, I don't know if Paul is on the call. Paul had sent me a uh message saying that uh CI that the CI40 work is about to be upstream, so he's going to be sending me a a CI40 to be added to Board Farm. Yeah. Hi, I am here. Awesome. Yeah, we got one or two, or does it matter? Um, I, I don't. I mean, we're probably only going to need one, but we'll take two. I mean, we may find <laughs> another use for it. I don't know. Um, whatever works. We're a little short, so I'll, I'll send you one. Eric. Okay, one one will be fine. Okay. Um, if we find a need later, we'll we'll ask for two. Um, anything else from anyone else on on board farm stuff? Um, I can um, mention yeah. that. I want to the board farm for the Anonabox. We talked about a little bit before about getting it into uh, trunk so it's supported. And I had a I had a question about that actually. Um, I've started I've started uh, the patch file for the target, and I was wondering if uh, it would be it would be all right to propose that as a purple project. The, writing the patch to get it into trunk, if that would be acceptable. Um. Well, I mean, I, I'm not the one who makes the decision, but uh, I, I, I did get did get the proposal. I haven't had a chance to move it along to the the committee. I mean, Kathy, what are your thoughts on it? I didn't hear what what board. What are we talking about? Well, this is for the Anana box. It's a QCA ninety five thirty one chipset. And Sounds good to me. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> okay. Well, then we will. Uh, I'll pass that along and to the committee, and um, I, we'll get feedback as well. We we can have you do a presentation um, in a different meeting. I, don't, I just don't think we have time today, unfortunately. Yeah, that's fine. I just want to do say that during the board farm portion of the meeting. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, Paul, have you um, also integrated your CI40 into kernel CI? Uh, we, I've tried. I've certainly sent them a, a, a board. I think the status, I haven't checked it in a little while, but the status was that there were still some build issues on MIPS, um, and the MIPS team were dealing with it. And I think once oh, that's okay. okay, then they'll run it on CI40. Oh, okay. Nice. I was going to mention that um, in the near future, I might be working on, uh, for the board farm, Yocto support, which is another open source embedded Linux distribution in addition to OpenWRT. So that might be something uh, I add to board farm in the coming months. Okay. That sounds cool. That's very cool. I was glad that board farm's finding more uses. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, 
anything else that anyone had said on board? Anyone has a question on board farm or anything like that? Um, is there any interest in historic uh, devices for board farm? Because I was having a discussion with Felix today about the traditional uh, Linksys S lock, and I think we should definitely have a kind of museum of historic devices as well. Also, because they're providing interesting test cases. I think so. I mean, I, I think we have interest in that as long as, I mean, if they're still continue to be supported in OpenWRT or LEAD, I think, I, I think we would want those. Okay, cool. Good to know. I'll, I'll look for one then. Okay. Awesome. Sounds cool. Love to, love to add it. I, I owe you some board to Eric. I think I still have an old Linksys WRT54G if you want that. If it's supported, yeah, that's cool. exactly the same category. Definitely, the SLOC and the WRT54G were like the first hackable Linux devices. I definitely think they should be. They both should be in board from continuously. Well, the WRT54G is uh, basically on the verge of not really being supported anymore due to limited resources. So I'm not sure we should add that one. Yeah, and you can use the S version with more memory. Yeah, that one flash. might work. The one with 8 megabytes of flash and 32 megabytes of RAM would work, but the original WRT54G, uh, not so much. The CPU is still slow, so it takes two minutes to boot or something like this. Yeah, and it only has 16 megabytes of RAM, which is the bigger problem. Yeah, also the big one takes uh, really long to boot. Mm. Right. Any other any other questions on uh, board farm or thoughts? All right. Oh goodness, that didn't work. Um, all right. Uh, funding open WRT projects. Um, the you know kind of where we know where we are on that. I think we we kind of went through that. Um, and Felix and Luca already gave their updates on the next round of funding. Uh, August actually. Um, you know, made his proposal for adding the Anonabox support. Um, I I don't know uh, if we want to do presentations at all today, but I um I think Luca had actually talked about his um his proposals uh, for RDKB and um uh, the uh, no SQL. That's it. No SQL support. Um, I was wondering if uh. If, if um, sorry, zoning on names here. Uh, Daniel, if you wanted to talk a little bit about kind of the discussions you'd had with uh, Felix and Luca about the stuff related to IoT. Yes, that would be great. Awesome. Um, um, should I just start right now? Please do. I think that'd be great. I think it's a, I think okay. it's a really cool project. Um, so uh, basically my idea is to make uh, sensors and simple low bandwidth actors um, available uh, through a standardized API. So uh, things like uh, data structures and also access control could be abstracted away. And my initial idea was to, um, to implement that uh, using a service in UBUS. Um, however, now I had a closer look at uh, Felix's work during the past few days, the SCAL framework. And um, though the name suggests that it's a system configuration abstraction, um, it could well be a generic system communication abstraction. And it already comes with uh, backends to execute arbitrary commands or um, to read uh, system-specific values, such as the current date and time. So that's not entirely unlike um, sensors and actors. So in the same way, the backend could be um, extended to provide uh, a, another plugin API for uh, sensors or a low bandwidth actors or maybe even raw access to, uh, to for example, a serial bus. Um, I'm not sure how all that would look like, but I'm sure that merging that would greatly benefit um, my use case because I wouldn't have to re-implement access control, but I would benefit from Felix's existing implementation. And um, I'll rewrite my uh, proposal in the next few days based on that insight, and I hope to um, 
I have more chats with Felix and uh, everyone else uh, with similar interests in that field. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope for, for more comments basically, especially on the um, how, how atomic should access control be and also how atomic should data structures be or, or should there be something like a raw bus access possibility to just whatever carry out um, arbitrary, let's say, um, I square C read or write operations or any bus read or write operations or should all access be um, abstracted to see okay now we're accessing the temperature field or stuff like that. Um, yeah, that, that, that's it basically. Um, I hope to have the final proposal ready by beginning of next week and I'll send it to you. Can I put you in can I put you in touch with uh, Arturo Rinaldi, who maintains the Arduino Yun Tien um, OpenWT builds? Because those are connected up to microcontrollers, and and it's a big it's a big deal for those boards to be able to support all sorts of sensors and actuators um, through a microcontroller that's also on board. But the microcontroller doesn't have to be on board; it could be you know distributed sensors talking over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or or some other means. So I just want to see how what you're proposing overlaps with with what Arduino has been doing in this area to bridge uh, you know the IoT space into OpenWT. So yeah definitely sounds very very uh, interesting and uh, yeah Saturo is, is here on the meeting I just saw so uh, go ahead sorry. Hey, hey everybody. Um, can you hear me? Yes, it's a little distorted, but yes. Okay, so uh, I was muted. The, uh, my name is Dennis. I'm with Sartura, and I would I would also like to. Uh, I have been working with Sucru regarding the network Tubast proposal that you are right now discussing. So I would I would just like to present my point of view. So. Uh, Basically, most of you are probably uh, have seen the proposals that Sukru and Daniel have circulated around the mailing lists, and I, from what I can see, the general consensus is that there might be room for cooperation. And so, uh, from Sukru and Intenos side, which is the company where that Sukru is. Uh, working with. The networked UBUS uh, would also uh, benefit from the IoT uh, changes that Daniel is proposing. So, um, the, some, of, some of you have Uh, which they also use for showing the uh, web pages. So, rather than starting something from scratch, I would highly advise to take a look what is already out there and work. Anybody? So, any thoughts? Uh, Daniel, I haven't really understood what the main focus should be. Should it be uh, to expose it to the internet or whatever, to the outside, or um, at least from uh, here, the internet, one, one problem is um, to have to, uh, there are lots of different ways to connect the sensor to it and to have some extraction way um, so that the application engineer doesn't have to know how to 
do something on the I2C bus or something like this, or how do I um, connect something, how to con do I connect to some Zigbee device or whatever. Um, but to make it easier to put an application on top of it, uh, which just says, yeah, this is a temperature sensor, and I call the get temperature method, and then I get the current temperature, and, I, and so that the application engineer doesn't have to care about how is this connected or what low-level data is has to be um, uh, transferred there. Um, should it be in, in this direction or more how to make this accessible from the outside or both or what? Um, I split the project up into um, mainly two major phases and in this first phase which is what we shall be discussing now, it's about the local abstraction of accessing those low bandwidth peripherals so that the application developer doesn't need to know about um, bus systems or details of uh, different hardware. Um, I had a look at IOTivity, of course, and um, I find it very bloated because it uses large libraries which are usually common on desktop systems but would be hard to uh, to bring them to very small embedded devices which limits the, the scope of the application. Also, the use of uh, C++ kind of suggests that, okay, you should um, use Boost and C++ and the data types which come with it. Um, and that's totally appropriate on larger systems, but I don't see that on simple, like on a light switch or on a small box providing remote access to a, a heater or something like that, um, which is the main reason why I thought, okay, it might be cool to use the much more simple um, libraries we got in OpenWT, so we have uh, a standard set of data types and algorithms, just like uh, Boost, um, but we don't use Boost, but we would use libubox and uBoost to, as an access method. And then I thought, okay, I would have a service uh, running, providing access to those local things via uBoost, and, but right now I more see, okay, what Felix has already started, can easily be extended, and I'm talking about scale to just have low, uh, low, ba low level backends, which would then use, let's say, lip sensors or lip modbus or um, whatever library provides access to uh, uh, Zigbee or or, or slow pan um, devices. Um, because in, in that way it would be easy to also have the RPC methods which could be various, which could be similar to what uh, Satura is doing, but could also like using web sockets and just having a UBUS proxy, um, but it could also be a more peer-to-peer -peer method which would not exceed, it. so data would never leave the realm of a single um, user or, or administrator or even for machine-to-machine -machine communication without the need of any intermediate uh, uh, supervisor. But that's phase two. Now phase one is really just local abstraction, basically. Sir, yeah, uh, I think... So I looked speaking, into... Sorry. I, uh, uh, okay, sorry, I'll let you go. go. I'll, I'll go. come in afterwards. Okay, then I said. Um, so I looked into the IoT, in, into IoT team, and uh, they have different uh, versions, so I think there's a C-only version, then there's a C++ version, which is on top of the C version, and then there's an additional uh, a constraint for constraint devices uh, version. Uh, um, so you can use the C-only version, but I don't think it really fixes the problem we have here, because there's no... So the goal for my activity is that you have it normally on all sensors, um, and they are then connected by, via IP. Um, to have this translation, I think we, there's no big benefit in having IoTivity in there. You can probably put it on top of what you are, want to build. Uh, that exactly, totally that's what sense. I was thinking. There could be a UBA sensor backend for IoTivity then, exactly. Yes, that makes sense. Uh, okay, so Paul, Paul here again. Um, I think last time we spoke about this, Eric asked what we were doing on Creator. Uh, we, we have a little wrapper of our own um, which works with the microwave clicks uh, called Let Me Create. 
I'm quite keen on getting our engineer who developed that in touch with you guys as well, just to make sure we're um, all doing the same thing. So, how should we how should we approach this? It, I, I propose that it would be best that we have a special meeting on this topic, and I don't see anybody from Intena side on the call, so definitely have them on board as well. From whom? Uh, Sukru, who sent the proposal ah. of the name. Ah, okay. I think that would be absolutely good. great. Yeah. Uh, hi, hey, this is Cesare uh, with, with Purple for people who, who don't uh, recognize my accent yet. So I just wanted to, to say that uh, I'm very interested in this project and in anything that might uh, provide an enabler for uh, OpenWRT to support the smart home app use case. And so this is exactly along those lines. And I would be particularly interested in being involved in any security conversation around these things. And in particular, if there is any kind of remote uh, code execution, how to protect or relegate that code in a specific uh, uh, container or secure domain or whatever is the situation. So please keep me the loop. I'm definitely very supportive of this uh, project. So does that mean we should aim at some uh, evening slot so you can participate as well? Uh, as in just just listening, so I, I just plan to be up to date and just be aware of the developments here. Yeah. Okay, no, you, you can just follow by by email. You guys could arrange the call if in Europe if you need to. Europe. At this stage, yeah. I'm not interested in the technical details. Uh, I just want to get an overall sense of the direction. I'm, 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 I'm really interested. Yeah, I can okay. I can tell you that uh, the the way that I designed the abstraction layer, and I intentionally. Uh, designed it in a way I'm planning to have another adapter to make it very easy to put specific parts of the abstraction layer into individual containers, especially those parts uh, that can easily be restricted to something very minimal. So to, to have this in kind of a distributed way and make it really easy to, to secure things by containerizing them. That, that sounds great because you, you said it before, the whole idea is to hide all the complexity to application developers who might be more interested in the actual application, IoT application, rather than interacting with the whole system. But that should extend probably also to some code that they need to execute. And whether it's in user space, whether it's in a container, where it's somewhere else, uh, but I think this should be probably taken into uh, consideration. And will make a big differentiator, right? Because let's be honest, all the protocols out there, there are so many around IoT, but they are not necessarily secure. So it might be a differentiator for OpenWRT to add something which is uh, more robust than the others. Right, and also the, um, the, the abstraction layer has a concept of ha allowing multiple providers of, uh, of access control. So you could, ba basically it's de designed in a way that once, uh, uh, if, if one uh, ACL backend says this request should be refused, then it will be refused. So there's no way of just hooking in something to open up things that should not be opened up. But you can hook in as many as you like, and they, they can control different domains or different parts of the system. So it, it, will, it will be very easy to just have plugins that lock down various parts or plugins that restrict access to sensors to particular users. Uh, and it will have all the information, not just for the front end, but also from the back end side. So uh, it would be very easy to create a security concept around that. It sounds, sounds very promising. As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in just being in touch with, with the key people and just follow the evolution of this project. Thank you. To make this actionable, I propose that we uh, find a slot that works for everybody. I can send a Google a list and we can find the slot and discuss this further if that's okay with everybody. Yep, sounds good. I think that's, that's a great idea. Or right, just just one here. Are there any other comments that we want to want to discuss on this topic? Because I, I personally think this is a really promising project. So I don't know if there's anyone else who has any thoughts. All right, sounds good, uh, Luca. I will let you take that action item, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. Uh. All right. Uh, okay. Great. 
Um, I guess do regulatory update. This has been pretty much my last couple days. Um, we thought we had a deadline of the end of the year to finish our paper um, to the uh, FCC Technical Advisory Committee on um, Software Controlled Radios. Uh, it turns out that they decided yesterday that it had to be done, or the day before on uh, Tuesday that it had to be done yesterday. Uh, so that was a bit of a bit of a surprise. So uh, I've been working um, feverishly along with the rest of the committee. Uh, I think we came up with with probably we're we're submitting the best proposal we could that that uh, considers the needs of of manufacturers and the FCC while making sure that the that the needs of of the uh, free and open source software community are fairly considered. Um, the gist of the of the recommendations that we have uh, we're tentatively have decided, um, and in I can probably I'm not sure if I can uh, show the final result before it goes to the TAC. I will I will verify that if someone wants to see it, but I can give you the gist of it. The the gist is basically we recommended that the discussion continue uh, into next year. That that has to be approved by the Technical Advisory Council uh, of the FCC, um, and if they do not want to do that. We recommend that they um, include uh, some of our descriptions on methods for protecting uh, target uh, parameters, which include things related to the, you know, the power and frequency and modulation methods and things along those lines. Um, we recommend that some of the methods, which include software methods and more social uh, recommendations for how we can get people to obey the rules without regulation, be added to um, the approval uh, form that the the guidance that is given out to manufacturers um, that is a backup recommendation in the sense that what we really recommend is that they continue this next year and expand it to a multi-stakeholder forum uh, which is going to include more people uh, the, I, the the committee quickly realized in the month that I was there and in a few months before that there are a whole lot more stakeholders to this process than just manufacturers and even a, the open source community. Um, there's people like academics, amateur radio operators, emergency personnel. Um, there's just literally um, probably a dozen different groups of people that should be considered in this discussion. Um, so that's really our recommendation is to continue the process and make it broader. Um, as the beginning, we had to work tentatively. We have to recommend that we start with a particular topic. Otherwise, the Technical Advisory Council may not approve it. Um, and our first topic is to consider uh, how digital signing can be done in a way that doesn't harm open source developers. Um, that said, the council can deal with uh, can deal with really any topic in this area, and it, it may be that we find that no digital signing meets the needs of developers. Um, and that's a possibility. Um, so that's kind of my tentative report. Um, it still has to be approved by the Technical Advisory Council um, and they have to review it. So I think the best way to look at this is we've just extended the process longer to have more people involved, which I think is a necessity. That is my report. If there, there, is there anyone who had any comments on that or questions? Good luck. Yeah, thank you. It, it was a little. Do you know when you'll? Do you know when they'll uh, decide if they can continue it or if they want to plow forward? Uh, it's next week. Okay, discussion. Okay, uh, it's, you'll know next week. Okay. Yeah, the the technical advisory council meets in Washington next week. It's live streamed. I plan on watching it. Um, and then they will decide, but they're also going to give feedback this week because they have to do a technical review. Um, I think that this was a, it was a really tough problem. And I think that people coming into it um, for, that came into it uh, generally thought it was a smaller problem than it was um, in how it's solved. Um, and that's really why we didn't come up with one technical solution because everyone realized there wasn't a technical solution that met everybody's needs. Um, so there needs to be more discussion and, you know, what are the pros and cons of any technical solution, if any, um, and how do we balance all these? Um, so I think it's probably uh, for everybody involved. I think this is probably the best best conclusion. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm happy with the results. And the, the chair of the committee 
um, was very gracious and very uh, thankful that I've been participating and and pretty much said that you know I, I hope you continue participating because we really um, expect you to participate otherwise we're going to it's going to be tough uh, going forward because they really were really happy with what I did so I'm happy with that and uh, I think it's all been a really positive result both for purple and for the open source community as a whole Hey, Eric, uh, congratulations, first Thank of all. Thank you. <laughs> <Good> <laughs> achievement. Uh, uh, just an idea, but I think this, this is too good to be just confined uh, in, in the context of this conversation. Uh, I would suggest we actually, uh, at the right time, uh, publish uh, some note, whether it's a blog post or it's whatever, uh, and get an agreement within this group and just make this a little bit more visible. And yes. So that the, the voice of the open source community can be heard even better, right? So and I'm, I'm all supportive of this, whether we do this with some technical writer, PR, so you do this yourself. You, you basically already did it, it's already recorded, you just need to put in a form that everyone in the group can uh, feel comfortable with and would agree with, and it might actually be the, the official OpenWRT uh, lead uh, uh, position, something like that. That's, uh, that's certainly a possibility. Either way, I, I do want to, want to uh, and we can talk about that with the various people involved. Um, but I do think that that I'm um, we definitely should should publicize this once the TAC votes and decides on it because I'm I'm really happy with the result and I think it's it's good for everyone involved. It's a great opportunity for the Open WRT lead also group to, to get some visibility and, and show some leadership uh, even at that level. So I think that's there's value for everyone. It's just an idea, and mm -hmm. if you think it's a good idea, I'm happy to help make this happen. Thank you. Yeah, we'll we'll I'll definitely talk with with folks and see what they think. Yeah, Eric, I would say just keep keep warming your way onto the inside so that you become an insider. <laughs> I, I don't know. Am I am I an insider now? I had to had to go through an ethics ethics review. So yeah, yeah. So uh, keep keep battling to get on the inside so that you can be the internal advocate and not just the external advocate. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, I think it's gone pretty well so far. Hey, Eric, this is a nice place, much warmer than where you are. So. <laughs> 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 anyway. Yep, fair. All right. Um, if nothing else in the regulatory uh, OpenWRT Summit review, uh, the committee met yesterday. Um, we kind of talked over the survey. I don't actually have that open right now, and we don't have very much time left. Um, but the, the general view is that uh, people were very positive. They very positively viewed the the uh, summit. They uh, and I think almost. I think more importantly, um, by and large, uh, there. Uh, I think it was a seven out of ten. Ten being um, greatly increased my view of OpenWRT and lead, um, and uh, zero being uh, completely negatively viewed it. The average was a seven. So not only did we get people there, uh, people generally have a more positive view of the open source or the OpenWRT and lead communities. So. Um, I think that is huge, and I'm I'm really happy with that result. Um, so I I like I can actually do a presentation on the survey in the next call, um, and and kind of just go through you know some of the things we learned. But that was, the general gist is people were really happy, and there was some feedback about um, too much in one day, which I totally agree with. Um, consider doing two days, which I think is a good idea. Um, more hands-on things like um, hackathons and um, and similar, um, or uh, a code sprint, or a code sprint, yeah, and um, uh, and and uh, not have a uh, not do the dinner with only uh, sitting tables, which I also think is a great idea because that was better in Dublin um, by far. I think all good things. So I was really happy, and I think uh, so. I want to. I hope that it that it worked out so far as as we had hoped. Eric, did you want, I sent the minutes for that call to the committee, but did, did you want to send those, I mean, I could also forward them just to the other mailing lists. Sure, please, that'd be a great idea. That okay. that also reminds me that we're, we're um, the committee agreed that we'd like to um, do a uh, split out um, the responsibilities a little more so that we have you know, one person or one committee that's 
or subcommittee that's involved in say um, finding sponsors or one committee and subcommittee that's involved in finding the location and, and things like that to uh, so we can we can do more um, and, and bring in more people in the community involved because this is this is a, a really important uh, really important program and I'm, I'm really happy with uh, and I think it's it's important for the community any comments or questions on OpenWT Summit stuff all right uh, not actually I don't have much of a carrier interest group update other than we're going to have a follow-up call um, with Scott Wilkinson from Broadcom he couldn't be at the last meeting um, I know the chairs in particular had just wanted to get some some clarification on some things because it's it's hard to get uh, a full sense of you know where things are for people based upon an email so uh, they wanted to be able to ask some questions so we're doing that next Tuesday um, and I don't have the time in front of me offhand um, I apologize I can send that to the list if you are um, you know, a member of Purple and want to be in the carrier interest group, um, you're more than welcome to join that. Or if you've previously been invited, um, you're more than welcome to join that. I, I don't think we're going to go through very much as a 30-minute call, um, just more of a follow-up. Um, uh, it's Monday. It's on Monday. Monday. I apologize. <laughs> Monday. Uh, it is Monday. At 9 a.m. PT, so same time as this meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Hauke. Uh, 9 a.m. PT on Monday. Um, any other comments or questions uh, on that or anything else? Uh, so, Dennis here. Um, yep. I would like just to reiterate that the, we and Satura and ADB should have this uh, meeting to further follow up with the technical um, questions regarding the TR069 integration with uh, SCAL. So is tomorrow a good good time, Pasquale and other? Well, Pasquale here. Unfortunately, tomorrow we we will have a, a company event, so we will not be in office at all. But starting from next Monday, we will be available anytime. Okay, so we'll set oh, up anyway, a doodle. Monday sounds good. Anyway, guys. Well. Sorry, Matteo from NDB here. Um, let's collect all your doubts and send out anyway tomorrow. We can have anyway a look at it uh, even tomorrow afternoon or during the weekend and reply back on Monday morning. Okay, so we'll, we'll work out the details via email and Doodle and whichever method we find. Sounds good. Sounds great. Well, uh, yeah, if there's nothing else, thank you ever for coming. An awesome meeting, great turnout, um, and I look forward to seeing you uh, next week um, at the uh, same time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Yep. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.